Hi, this is Paula from Secure Academy, and in today's episode of Secure Hacks Weekly, we're going to talk about SMB Relay Attack. SMB Relay Attack relies on NTLM version 2 authentication, which uh, in most companies uh, this is normally used. Unfortunately, when we are listening to what is going in the network, we're able to capture certain part of the traffic related with the authentication and we're able to relay it to the other servers. And uh, the good part of it, or bad part of it, depends on the perspective, is that who is actually doing it. Is it user authenticating somewhere? Well, that's good. But is it hacker listening to the network and he's authenticating in the name of the user that wanted to authenticate? That sounds serious, right? So putting it in a little bit of a picture, in a two days episode, we're gonna discuss the following situation. First of all, here we've got a server. So SRV. So um, in the normal traffic, what happens is that here we got a user and that user wants to authenticate. If the user will be authenticating with NTLM version two, for example, then what normally happens is just user authenticates and all is good, but if there is somewhere out there a hacker listening to the network, he's able to grab this authentication challenge, so part of the traffic, and forward it by himself either to the same server or to the other servers in the network, just like that. So in a two days episode, I will demonstrate first of all the attack and then we will discuss how to prevent it. So let's dive in. Okay, you should see the screen that I'm sharing right now. And uh, in front of us, there is a Windows 8 client with task manager opened with uh, plenty of processes running. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want you to understand uh, fully the SMB relay attack. Uh, because here we've got SVC host process ID 964 running as a local system. And that's going to be the process um, where we will be impersonating into. So this will paint the whole context in a moment. So 964, it's the process ID that we are interested in. Okay, let me connect to the Linux box. And for the attack, we are, will be using uh, Kali Linux, so why not? Uh, but uh, you need to uh, download the Python script uh, separately. So what you should search for, if you want to repeat uh, this, the things that I'm doing right now, it's an impacket master set of Python scripts. And the script that we are using, it's SMB Relay X. And um, as usual, the link to the tools you will find in the blog post below. So let's have a look what is the situation. First of all, if config, and as you see, we've got here IP address 10.10.10.99. Okay, why not? And um, this, is the, this is the attacker machine, and our victim will be the client that I just showed you, which is actually 10.10.10.250. Uh, okay, this is all great, but let me use this uh, opportunity to start uh, the Metasploit console, because we're going to be uh, leveraging Metasploit a little bit. So MSF console. Okay, and that's going to be starting. And I will use this opportunity to explain what is uh, actually uh, happening here. First of all, um, in the first uh, console, this one, we've got, um, we are generating a payload, which will be executed uh, at the moment, uh, of course, when we are authenticated uh, to the uh, client, this payload will be delivered uh, after the authentication over NTLM version 2. Uh, and uh, what we have in the back, it's a relay attack where we will be actually relaying um, that particular um, well authentication challenge. Let me explain in a moment in details how it works. And at the execution, we'll be uh, launching SMB ref, which will use the reverse TCP connectivity to connect back to us while we are listening. So there are actually three stages of the attack. Uh, the, the one of them we are about to configure, but one is of course the relay, which is the one that you see. Another one is that we have to have something to relay, so first we need to generate a payload. And another one uh, over here uh, within the Metasploit, we will set up the handler where we are about to listen to incoming uh, connections. Yes, yeah? so this is the uh, case. Uh, very good. So, um, how 
to set up Metasploit. Well, in order to set up Metasploit, uh, when we have it already launched, it's actually quite easy. We will define use exploits, exploit, and then we will do multi, and then handler, and then we are done. And then we will specify our payload, so it's going to be set payload, and then it's going to be Windows, Matter, Prater, and Reverse TCP. We can also use Tab to fill up um, automatically what we are doing. Okay, first let's generate the payload. Yes, so MSF payload. And this is this Windows Metaprater Reverse TCP. We will be connecting back to the hackers machine, so 10.10.99, 10, 10, on the port 4444. And then um, that's uh, going to be uh, saved in the executable, as you see, that will be executed on the uh, client side. We could also use, of course, uh, MSF Venom. There are plenty of uh, possibilities. Um, we can do it also this way. Yeah, so that doesn't take too long. The payload is already generated. Very good. And over here we can set it up. And um, we can do show options just to make sure that everything is okay. So local port is fine, but the local host set L host 10, 10, 10, 99. So this is where the victim will be connecting to. Okay, we are all fine. Now the only thing we can do is exploit. Very good. And now we are listening. Well, nobody is really um, communicating with us. We are just listening right now. So in order to do it, we need to set up over here uh, our relay. So a relay attack. So uh, what's the what's the case? The case is that NTLM um, in general that we will be leveraging here for the attack. It's a challenge response uh, protocol, and uh, when authentication happens, it it looks someone like this: that the client first says that he wants to authenticate, he wants to get access somewhere, then server sends us a challenge, and that particular challenge is that, okay, that's great that you wanted to authenticate, but uh, first, what you need to do is to encrypt that certain message with um, your hash. And whenever that is happening, uh, whenever the challenge is, of course, encrypted by the client, by the user's uh, hash, then the server, uh, knowing, of course, that the hash of the user, tries to decrypt the challenge, and then, of course, um, we are authenticating to the particular place. Yes, uh, What's the case is that um, within the attack that we've got, we will be playing in a, a role of the man in the middle, um, uh, entity and uh, what we will do we will simply speaking authenticate by uh, forwarding um, the particular uh, challenge information to the server so effectively what will happen is that we will be able to authenticate to the server as a client um, that wanted to authenticate, for example, even somewhere else. So as long as we've got that particular data, we are able to uh, forward it and then uh, be able to uh, authenticate. So what is the success about is that we should be able, and as long as we do this, uh, we should be able to get access to the server as long as we pass the um, encrypted response uh, to the particular target. Yes. So this is the, this is the whole idea. Okay, so we are all uh, set. Now let's start the relay attack. So we are right now waiting for any types of challenge that could happen within the um, within this particular network. So this is this is great. And um, well, this is a very small environment, so there's not much uh, we've got to uh, play around. In a normal network, you're going to see a lot of communication like this. So what we could do is to enforce that situation a little bit. Let's do it. I will switch, for example, to the web server. So this is absolutely not related server. And what I will do, I will try to get access to 10.10.10.99, 10, 10, for example. Yes, it could be by IP address, by short name. So any place where we are using NTLM for authentication. Yes, so let's do it. I will switch to the Linux box quickly. And what happened right now, as you see, this is, the, we, we got, of course, our connection. And uh, we managed to capture the challenge. We're authenticating here. Uh, I will do migrate. 
964 to move to the a little bit more stable process because as you see we have already one session opened uh, on that particular server migration completed successfully great now you could be wondering why do I specify the name of the process uh, the process ID um, in this case if I don't know it well um, this is to show you in, a, in this demo how it works yes but in the real attack when you are at this that stage here before typing being great you do PS yes to list all of the processes and then you find out the process like for example here yes that is running as a local system yes so we are able to specify that process ID so I kind of secured myself to make sure that everything's going to work out by specifying the process ID but over here you are able to spot that particular process ID very easily too yeah so we are able to um, uh, get this particular information and for the clear view we can uh, we can also um, do this yes so we've got our processes with the process IDs listed process ID is the column on the left yes so uh, we've got um, this is the, this is the list of the processes and just to show you this is our SVC host that we use in order to migrate to the process lovely so we can also do hash dump since we are uh, hash dump okay since we are on the um, client and as you see these are the hashes so lm hash and nt hash uh, here of the local users very good and uh, the next stage uh, we can do shell obviously and then uh, we can do who am I and you, you see that I'm system here and we can do host name and we are Windows 8 client so this is pretty amazing because Windows 8 client was not engaged in the whole communication it was a web server so 10 10 10 to 100 in our case trying to authenticate to 10 10 10 99 so our for example hackers machine just to simplify this demo and uh, effectively Windows 8 so being absolutely not related was in this case a victim yeah, so this is the whole uh, story with the uh, SMB Relay. In order to, of course, to get appropriate tools, you need to download the SMB Relay X from the Impacket Master, and then the rest you've got uh, built in in Kali Linux. So nothing else but to try. So for now, you learned uh, how to perform SMB Relay attack by using SMB Relay X Python script. And uh, unfortunately, as I already mentioned, this is the attack that uh, pretty much always works in every organization because we are using NTLM. That's the problem. And solution for that, uh, which would be perfect, idyllic, is to move to Kerberos as the authentication protocol uh, for the enterprise.